Welcome back YouTube. Today I'm going to take you through a full workout walkthrough into one of my recent training sessions. So this session comes from my half body training split that I recently finished up after following for a total of 12 weeks. In this video, I'll take you through every single exercise and give you an insight into how I approach things like warm-ups, some of the training techniques, and a few extra programming tips to help give you guys an insight into exactly how I go about implementing a lot of the content that you see me throw up on here on YouTube. And if you don't really care for this sort of nerdy detail, well then hopefully it serves as a nice calming video to help soothe you off to sleep or to keep you company whilst you're cooking or on the toilet or something like that. I'll drop some timestamps into the pinned comment section below, and I'll also section out this progress bar so you can jump backwards and forwards as you like the different parts of the workout. Of course, if you have any questions on anything mentioned at all, feel free to drop a comment down below as well. And finally, please do drop this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It might not seem like much, but it really does make a big difference in helping the growth of this channel, which means more content to help keep you educated and entertained. All right, so the first thing we need to discuss is what exactly is half body training and why might you want to be utilizing it? As the name suggests, instead of training the full body in one workout or having separate body part days with each body part being performed on its own individual day, I'm grouping half of my muscle groups together and performing them all in one workout. I see the half body split as having similar benefits to a full body training split. It allows you to train the body with a higher amount of frequency than a typical body part split where you'd be dedicating an entire day to each individual body part like chest or back or leg day. So I trained four days a week on this training split. I did Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays and Fridays. On Mondays and Fridays, I was training glutes, hamstrings, chest, shoulders and triceps. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I trained back, biceps, rear delts, shoulders and quads. The split was following this four day split, but I structured it according to this A, B, B, A split, with my A workouts being Monday, Friday for glutes, hamstrings, chest, shoulders and triceps, and B workouts on Tuesday, Thursdays being back, quads, biceps, rear delts and shoulders. Occasionally, I'd do a bit more frequency than this with my different body parts, and I did end up switching my arm work around a little bit through the whole 12 weeks, but that was the general theme for the training cycle. I would also change the order of priority on different days. So workout A1 on Monday versus A2 on Friday was the same body parts, but what you'll see is on workout A1, I started with glutes and hamstrings, whereas on workout A2, I ended up starting with chest and shoulders instead. In this video, I'll take you through workout A1, where we go through glutes, hamstrings, chest, shoulders, and triceps. And next time, I'll show you guys workout A2, so you can see how it differs despite being the same body parts. In general, I'm a really big fan of any type of high-frequency training program, as I do believe that your body can recover a lot faster than what we give it credit for. And in most cases, that means training in body parts two to three times per week, and it's going to be ideal. Whether you choose to do something like a full body training split or a half body training split or maybe upper lower or push pull leg, it's completely up to you. Each of these different training splits offers a slightly different stimulus due to the setup of the overall training week and that may or may not be best for you at any given time. For me personally, I was just transitioning out of a full body training split prior to starting this half body training cycle. So with full body training, I was averaging around 10 to 13 sets per body part each week. But I was spreading the volume across four workouts per body part, so that was only about two or three sets per day. With half body on the other hand, I'm still doing about 10 to 13 sets, although I did go up to about 15 by the end of the training cycle. But since I was training each body part only twice per week on average, that equates to about five or six sets per day instead. So if you look at this across a week, it's still roughly the same amount of work or volume or sets, but if you look at it a little bit more closely each day, it was considerably more work, particularly from an endurance perspective. This allows me to also add in more variety of exercises to hit my muscles from different angles and positions, as well as allowing me to introduce a lot of variety with different techniques like drop sets, supersets, giant sets, and isometrics to create even more intensity in my workouts. 
Had I tried doing these things on a full body training split previously, there's a good chance that that would be too much volume and intensity for me to handle, and I wouldn't be able to recover or make as much progress on it long term. Now, I do also want to mention that I have this entire half body training program, the full body training program, and my exact current training program I'm doing right now, which is actually an upper lower split, and several more workouts, all deconstructed for you, just like this to follow on my app and website. The details in these videos are designed to help you understand not just what I do, but to also help you build your own workouts around your needs, your goals, and equipment availabilities. There will be a link for a no obligation trial in the description box for you to join up and get access to everything on both the desktop website and my app that's available on both Apple and Android devices. It's absolutely free to try out and if you don't like it, you can always cancel before the trial ends. But anyway, back on track. As you can see through this video so far, I started out with glute bridges performed as a superset with dumbbell Romanian deadlifts. For the glute bridge, I'm only doing a partial range of motion where the tension remains high on my glutes without it drifting more across to my hamstrings, my quads, or my adductors. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that happening at all, but I wanted to maximize the glute stimulus here, and I'd be addressing the other muscles and the other ranges of motion in the next exercise in the sequence, which was the dumbbell Romanian deadlift. In terms of warm-ups, I've worked up pretty quickly here. I started with three plates on the machine, and I just kept slapping on plates with very minimal rest between each set and decreased the reps as I went up. This is how I normally approach warming up in general. I used to do a lot of workout prep with things like isometrics or more fluid warm-up mobility drills in the past, but over time, I actually found it to not be that necessary. There's nothing wrong with a bunch of the other stuff you may see people doing in the gym, but I've simply found for me personally that if you've set your training up well, you'll often find that you don't really need anywhere near as much of a warm up to help limber yourself up as you normally find that the training itself over time is more than enough to have you in this state of readiness for the most part. So once I hit my top weight on both exercises, I performed two sets here, taking each set close to failure. I probably had between one to three more reps left in the tank on each set, but at this point with the amount of weight I'm using, it's getting a lot more uncomfortable to continue pushing the reps or the weight up any higher. So instead of pushing things up further with the volume or intensity on the glute bridges, I decided to add in the superset with Romanian deadlifts. So when it comes to progression long term, it's really important to be progressing the stimulus on your body in some way. We typically like to quantify this as more reps, more weights, or more sets on the given exercises. But a really important thing that people often forget is that it's not just about doing more sets of the same exercises. That's not really the point. The point is to get more of a stimulus on your body. So you can achieve that using sets of whatever you like. And in this case, I chose to do the dumbbell Romanian deadlift. So I only really added the dumbbell Romanian deadlift in in the last four or five weeks on my training cycle to create a bit more volume. Couple of reasons why I chose the dumbbell RDL. First, coming into it pre-fatigued from the thrusts meant that I didn't have to use as much weight. And getting the dumbbells into position is sometimes a little bit awkward as you get to the really heavy and big dumbbells. Secondly, the RDL challenges the opposite end of the range of motion for glutes. The glute bridge, particularly with how I do it with that small range of motion, challenges the glutes in their fully shortened position, or when I'm in that fully locked out or thrusted position. Whereas the Romanian deadlift challenges the glutes the most in their stretched out position or lengthened position, when I'm bent over with my hips back as far as possible. Finally, I'm also doing a barbell RDL later in the week, so this is just a little bit of a variation with dumbbells instead on the Monday. So, Next up after that was a leg press superset with a 45 degree hyperextension for glutes and hamstrings. I'm choosing more stable and isolated exercises here to finish off this lower body part of the workout as I've already accrued a lot of fatigue from the glute bridges and the RDLs. So something like lunges or split squats or free weight squats would be harder for me to manage and more likely see a lot of technique breakdown. 
but there is no reason why you couldn't add them in as well if you wanted to. The fact is, this could actually be a really good time to put in something like a free weight squat or a lunge, as potentially the pre-fatigue from the first part of the workout would mean that you wouldn't need to use as much weight, but could still go through the movement itself and still receive a decent stimulus on your body, as your body will be more inclined to call upon as many muscle fibers as possible because it's already fatigued. There really is a lot of ways that you can manipulate and adjust this program. I personally did more free weight based lower body movements on my other lower body training days or other days in general. So I opted for something more stable that would allow me to push a lot harder in terms of intensity for this workout A. So to finish off legs after that, I ended with a few sets of calf raises and ended each set with a 10 second isometric hold in the stretch. I tend to bias a lot more static holds in the stretch for calves more than any other muscle group due to the strength and stiffness of the Achilles tendon, where adding in a loaded isometric contraction like this does have benefits from an overall tendon and tissue health perspective, as well as being one disgusting contraction for the calves. So after this, I went on to doing upper body. Today for a uh, workout A1 was chest, shoulders and triceps. I started out with gymnastic ring push-ups. The angle that I'm using is similar to what kind of angle I'd be getting if I was doing a low incline dumbbell press for chest. So this here is an overall chest stimulating exercise. I'm opting for rings so I can get more freedom at my shoulder blades and to challenge me more from a stability perspective. This is something that was lacking from a lot of the work I was doing in the months prior. Because as mentioned, prior to this, I was running that full body training split where the main goal is to train as hard as possible and push as close to failure as possible on a lot of basic, very stable pressing movements for chest anyway. In that period, I wanted as much external support and stability as possible to improve the overall output of my muscles. But the other thing is, some, while something like that is really good for muscle and strength, it may not be the best thing long term for your joints and for your nervous system to be challenged from a coordination and stability perspective. Now with rings on the other hand, it's hard to get any real load involved unless you're extremely strong and can handle something like a full planche. So when I was doing this, I did incomplete rest, where I did six sets of six with about 15 seconds rest between each set. So this generates a lot of fatigue very quickly, which then forces the nervous system to call upon those high threshold mode units to help me push out the final reps while still getting that stability and coordination benefit from the exercise. So this is how I'm still able to get some sort of meaningful muscle building stimulus on a movement where I'm limited with options for adding weight. Other options could also have been things like slowing things down, adding in pauses, or doing more of an emphasis in some way on the bottom range of motion where it's most challenging. I didn't do that here because I'm adding those techniques into one of my other workouts later on in the week. I didn't want to just double up on it for no reason whatsoever. After that, I moved on to a superset of high inclined dumbbell presses for upper chest and an upper chest cable fly. Similarly to the gymnastic ring push-ups, it's pretty hard to push the chest fly on its own with any meaningful weight if you're not already in a fatigued state. As you'll often find that you, since you don't have any support, it's your ability to stabilize your body that is the biggest limiter to the amount of weight that you use and not the amount of strength that you have in your chest in this context. So doing them as a superset makes a lot more sense if you want to generate a significant amount of tension in the target muscle. Finally, I finished up this whole workout with a superset of a machine shoulder raise and single arm katana extensions for triceps. I personally like to finish off my workouts with more unilateral isolation work as it means I don't have to use anywhere near as much load and it's typically easier to manage from a neurological level as they tend to be easier movements overall. I also like to use more density based techniques like supersets to keep the pace of the workout up because by this point of the workout, I'm usually starting to get quite restless and my mind starts to drift off and wander a lot more. And this is a good way to keep me focused and present in the workout and to not waste any time just scrolling around on my phone. So I simply went back and forth between sides and exercises. I did left arm raise, right arm raise, left arm katana, right arm katana, and right back to the starting with the raises with no break at all. 
So there you have it guys, session number one in this half body training split. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something useful from it. And a big thank you to all of you for sticking around all the way through to the end to help to skew that YouTube algorithm in my favor. As I said, if you have any questions, do drop them in the comment section below and I'll see you all next time.